Hello everybody and welcome to 7 Days to Die Guide. I'm the Rugged Gamer and we are going to go through Alpha 17 Guide this time. Uh, if you remember, if you've looked back in my channel previously, you'll notice that I have done one of these before and it was on the Xbox version. This is the PC Alpha 17. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really good. It's a hell of a lot different. Uh, so, first of all, let's talk about the start of the game so we're going to go through the first kind of seven days and how to survive the horde and how to not get yourself killed and basically just make yourself a lot living your living a lot easier throughout the whole game and getting yourself a good start so first of all i want to note that i have increased the daytime everything else is set to default apart from the de the length of day it's highly recommended that you uh, in increase that because it's just much better for you for the gameplay You'll find that you can do a lot more within the game and you're not restricted as much as what you would be if the game was on default. However, feel free to play it on default. There's there's nothing really different to what the guy can do. It, it can be done on any kind of day mode, uh, apart from if you put it on really low and then you, you really need to move quick. So, first of all, you start off and you're in the middle of nowhere. You've got a few items and you can do a few crafting things. Uh, it's... Pretty self-explanatory, but we will go through some parts and some tips and stuff out on the way. If there's anything that I miss, or if there's anything you like more details on, just make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will make sure I get back to you and clarify anything. So, this is a random generated map that I've used on another playthrough that you will spot coming onto the channel very soon if it's not already on, uh, with a kind of challenging build. So you may f you may find things a little bit similar and some things not. At the moment, we're in the desert biome. It's in the middle of nowhere, which is a good start, I guess. Now, the desert biome is one of the harder ones to start because, obviously, there's less food on it. But we can we can make do with it. That's not a problem. So, what do we want to be doing first? Well, I'm just looting everything around me just for the sake of looting everything around me. But what you want to do is you want to do... Oh, look at that. There's a, a farm field. That's handy. We'll let that grow and we'll, we'll take some of that. Oh, it's actually grown. So we'll take, I forgot when, when it spawns it, it gives you the actual product. So we'll, we'll get rid of all that and there's uh, some other bits of boss we want to pick up. But the first thing you want to do is you want to complete the quests for the starter things. So it gives you some like, little starter quests. You want to do them because they give you points. You'll get four points which will help you and we'll go into that shortly. So let's get the... Things out of the way, shall we? Okay, that's our bedroll place down, which is one of our first tasks that we need to do. Next one, I just want to kind of make a point on this, is crafting the stone axe. So it's going to ask you to gather small stones. Uh, you can smack away at the bigger stones, and it will give you them. In a, you know, it, it takes a while, but it will give it you them. Your best bet is to look for stones on the ground, which are pretty easy to spot in the desert. Not as easy when you come to doing the doing the forest biome it's a little harder to see um but whenever you see a bird's nest make sure you pick these up and i'll explain why shortly so we can craft our stone axe and this is what i want to show you so the stone axe is going to be something you're going to be using for quite a while so hit that favorite button there and then you go ahead and craft it and what that does is if you want to really you know if you want to craft something really quickly it's just hit that and it's up there you don't necessarily need to do it for the stone axe you can just keep repairing it but i like to um I like to have it on there just in case I want to build a new one. So what I also did whilst the mat was being built, the, the bed roller was being built, was is I collected more of the plant fibre. Because our next task is this. So let's get these going. So we need these here. Okay, so we've crafted our clothing and now we need to put it on. For those of you who may not know, to get into your inventory is just a tab key. Just in case you didn't know that. And what you can do is just if you oh, we don't want to do that. if you click on each item and press the W, it will place them all on for you like so. That's another task complete. Keep collecting stone, you're gonna need that for repairs and for new items. But our next task is to craft the wooden club. So we can collect some of this wood. Get a tree. Oh not the cactus down. Okay, so we've created the wooden club which gives us a good melee weapon. It's alright to start off with, and if you press the shift key and click it, it'll place it on your hotbar, 
or you can just drag and move it around where you want. I tend to keep some of my items together so it's easier to do. Stone axe is going to need a repair, so we'll do that while we've got our tools. Next thing we want to be doing is the bow and arrows. Now we've been collecting the feathers as we've been going around, so hopefully we should, well, we definitely have enough. So we can just go ahead and we'll make 21 of them. Now that will use up all your feathers, wood and stone, whichever one is obviously the least amount. So make sure you collect some more. Always good to have something in your backpack because you never know when you're going to need to repair something. Uh, while we're at it, we need to gather some more wood. So don't don't think like you're overdoing anything. Take plenty of all of these supplies. You're going to use them all. So there's no harm in taking more than what you need right now. They all stack onto one up to 6,000 6, anyway. And you're not going to get 6,000 this early on. So you may as well just get what you can. I'll just wait till this breaks and then we'll move on to getting our stone, uh, our wood even. To gather your wood, it's easier hitting the trees down. The small things don't give you as much wood and it just takes a bit longer. Even these small trees give you more in wood. Okay, so our next task is to create the wood frames. Now this is one thing I would certainly place down as a favorite because you're going to be using plenty of them. Uh, you get, majority of stuff you build straight off is going to be out of these so we'll just do three because that's all we need for our challenge there we go and then you just place them down anywhere it doesn't really matter at the moment and then if you go to your axe and right click on them it will upgrade them for you there we go that's seven of eight done and the last one is a campfire So what I tend to do is just craft and place it down. It, it's not necessarily a problem where you put it right now. You're just going to use it if you do manage to gather some stuff. So that's it. That's the starter quest done. You get a bit of this shitty chat here. Uh, if you want to read it, you'll get it anyway. So I'll let you read it. But basically it's telling you you're going to go to a trader. And it points out where your nearest trader is. Which for us is some distance off. Quite a distance off. Uh, there's an easy way if we just look at it on the thing there which is the exclamation mark it's northwest so we know if you look he's pointing that way so we, it is here somewhere oh there it is that is some distance away so what i strongly suggest is if you're in an area where you can manage to gather some supplies go ahead and gather some supplies like here we've got yucca plant we've got aloe vera we've got the potato plant lots of stuff we can gather here before heading to the trader but realistically you want to be heading near the trader on the first night if you can if you can't then just use the same tactic we're going to use at the trader but use it wherever you are so i'm just going to go ahead and collect these things around here and then i'm going to make my way towards the trader and we'll head back and see what the next objective is for our survival hello everybody and welcome back as you can see we are just getting to our trader now and the first thing we want to do is look at the time now as you can see we're currently at three o'clock so we've got bags of time so we can continue moving on if you're anywhere near eight o'clock then i suggest going towards the end of the video and finding out uh, how to secure yourself at night and, and then do everything that we're going to do now on the next day there's, there's no harm in that it just puts you back a little bit that's all uh, if you're on a short day then and you've had to run as far as I have, then you probably won't make it to uh, Trader Joe's. But we have made it. So let's go in and check out what the trader has and what we can do. Now, the first thing you'll notice is is the traders now have various things. And this has got a chemistry station, which is uh, fairly handy, actually. Uh, and he may have a few other bits and bobs. He's got a workbench, which is good, working workbench. And unfortunately, the cement mixer is broken. Uh, nitrate powder we'll grab that uh, he does have vending machines oh he's got a oh, it's a destroy, destroyed forge unfortunately sometimes some of these are working perfectly fine as you can see some of them are working fine and if you're struggling you can get yourself some drink from the vending machine but let's head on up to Trader Joe's and let's see why it's important that we now use the traders if you've played any other version you probably haven't bothered much with the trader but now it's very important to use him so, first of all, we can check out what he's got in his inventory. Uh, anything we want to get there, that's down to what you want. You can also sell things that you don't want. 
Uh, now I tend to keep everything because everything can be used in some way or another. Sorry, I didn't have what you needed. So I keep all of it, and I am. Are you done? Are you done talking? So next, the, the one thing I do is is I keep all my stuff so that I can use it later down the line. Some of it we don't need yet, but it's easier having it and then not needing it than needing it and not having it. So the most important thing the trader is here for is the jobs. I'd strongly suggest avoiding buried supplies until you've got at least iron spade because it's an absolute nightmare to try and do that. Uh, you, you gotta try and dig it out. And it's, it's just like finding treasures, it's a nightmare. Clear zombies is quite hard if you haven't got the gear as well. But I believe it's every day he will reset his mission, so it's worth checking out. But now we are here, we wanna stay close by to the trader for the job so we can pick up some extra XP and we can also sell whatever we've got later down the line oh or buy things that we need more you know more matter of fact right? there we go these down uh, i've already done these ones so you've got to the traders you've got a bit of time on your hands uh we've got at least four hours before we need to worry about trying to find ourselves a good location the next thing i want to do is look at a house now the reason why I aim for a decent house is you're better holding up in a house for the first night and certainly for the first horde than you are trying to build something that will survive the horde. First recommendation of your first seven days, do not try to build something that will survive the horde. It won't survive, they'll smash it down and certainly if you've increased the level of the horde, which I have, I've put 64 zombies on so there's a lot of zombies that come, it, nothing will survive. Now, on one of my other playthroughs that you will see that I have where I've been doing some work, I have this exact house. This is this is the exact same area that we're at. I use this house, and they destroyed the entire bottom layer. And that's cobblestone, so it's quite a hefty structure to get through. But they smashed through it. So your best bet is to find something like this, something with two levels if you can, and you want to put yourself on the roof for the first horde. And we'll get to that anyway when we get to day seven. But just a forewarning in advance. So, the reason why I go to a house rather than trying to do collecting supplies and stuff like that is because a lot of stuff we need will be in one of these houses. Uh, there's a couple of houses down here that we want to look at. Now, the first thing we want to try and do is get ourselves a better weapon. And the better weapon we want is the Iron Reinforced Club, which takes 100 iron. Now what you can do is you can take raw iron and you can actually scrap raw iron. And it'll give you a little bit, but we haven't got enough to build the club. If you're wanting to have a better chance of surviving, then I recommend you break down the little rock thing formations there. Break them down and get yourself some iron and then you can build yourself your iron, uh, iron reinforced club which will be a lot better against facing the zombies. But we're going to go in with our wooden club, just in case you can't do that. Now, in this version, they've actually changed how the zombies react. If you notice, they're not really stirring. I don't know if we'll see them. What they tend to do now is they'll wait for you to actually come in, and then they'll stir and attack you and try and ambush you which can be an absolute pain. But I'll show you some little ideas we can do where we can get away with taking a lot of damage off, off a, well, at least off one of them before we've even started. Now I see if there's a weaker entrance because that's iron and it'll take a while for us to dig through. Oh, he's wandering. No, so we'll have to break down the iron door. We can break through here, actually. Now, this may stir some zombies. And it's going to take a while. Another good thing is, is you're still getting some supplies. I mean, I know it's not much, but at least you're getting some mud for it. Now, one thing to bear in mind, they've overhauled the houses. There's, like, trap floors. There's loose flooring that you can go into. As mentioned, the zombies tend to try and ambush you a little bit more well there they are so what you want to try and do is you want to crouch for your first shot use your bow and arrow and you get double damage double sneak bonus damage 
and then attacking that one will more than likely wake. There we go. So we've got some more zombies on the run now. Now they tend to come the quickest way they can to you, so they'll drop on top of you, they'll come from above, below and everything. Which you collect your stone arrows. Well, they're definitely stirring. Try and not get yourself in a situation where you're stuck in a building. So bring him out. Oh. Bring him out and attack him outside because if you do get hit from behind by mistake, you know, if you've missed one and the one's come around, at least you've got some room to maneuver. Now, a little tip there are zombies up there. There are two of them. One's right at the top and will drop down. And one's on that level as well. So keep an eye out on them. They won't bother you until you try and go up there. Now, oh, there's another arrow there. You want to check everywhere you can because they now have bags and all sorts around. Now what I tend to do is I tend to clear the house first. And then loot everything. Where have we got... Okay, there's another zombie coming, but I can get a shot off. Oh, that isn't a zombie. Now you can use your bow and arrow at close range, but it's not ideal. Oh, missed him. Just keep kiting him. Aim for his head, because obviously that's a weak point. Oh, we got another level. Now, Actually, we'll go safe distance. One thing I haven't pointed out is our spends. So, it's completely up to you where you put your skill points in. Personally, I improved the strength. And improved sexual Tyrannosaurus and Pat Mule as your first two. You're going to need at least one of each of them, if not two. So, what I tend to do is I tend to go for that and that. And then I'll do... Something along the lines of intellect. Just because we need these building as well. There we go. That's our points used. But it is completely up to you. That means is we can carry more stuff before we're encumbered. And it uses less stamina. Oh, this club is terrible. Okay, let's head back in and clear the house. Okay, so once you've cleared most of the house, or at least a house that's cleared enough for you to be comfortable, you can start looting it now. The only thing we've got left in this house is the two that are at the top, right up there, but we'll get into that. So, this is what I'm on about, where they put things everywhere. So we'll have to break this one down. They put things in all the thing places you wouldn't even think about. So it's worth checking out everywhere within a house. And we'll go through a few bits and pieces as we loot this house. And the reason why we've targeted one rather than just carried on our normal stuff. Okay, oh, we've actually got ourselves an iron reinforced club, so we don't actually need that one anymore. Excellent, that's what we want. And some gear there, and there's food. Now, you'll be low on food and water, so whatever you find food wise, get it in you until you're above the marker. Uh, you can go 50 above what you actually have. So we've got 100 stamina, so we can go 150 uh, f food film fulfillment here. Uh, now, these houses are great because they've got loads of crates in the basement. And lots of weaponry, which is handy early on. And these work the same way they did in the previous versions. So we don't want to break them down any further than just a crate off. Empty jars are still useful because we can fill them with murky water and then we can obviously get that into clean water once we've got our campfire set up. Okay. Now one thing, if, you, if you're if worried about dying within a house, then it's safe. 
your safe bet is to get yourself a roll mat, a bedding mat, bedding roll even. Oh, an iron fire axe, excellent. Uh, I'll just drop that because I don't want that. Oh, we'll drop it soon. Loads of weapons there, that's good. So, we're in need of water. As you can see, we're thirsty. But yeah, if, you, if you're not comfortable and you think you might die, then place the mat outside somewhere safe. So if you do happen to die, at least you're not running miles away. Okay. So when I say they put them everywhere, they put them behind pictures. That's a wall safe, so it's going to take us forever to break that down, so we'll leave that for now. But you also want to look on the floor as well. Sometimes there are loose floor panels which you can uh, pick up and you can, uh, sorry, you can break into them and there's things hidden underneath the floorboards. Ooh, what's that there? So, we'll eat these, which will create some space. Not the greatest thing in the world. But let's get it up there. And then the empty cans, we'll use a scrap. And I found a cooking grill, which was in this here. I don't know why we've got a hay bale, so we can get rid of that. Get rid of the candy canes. Now, this is where we're going to be hauling ourselves up. So, what I tend to do is I'll get a chest, secure storage chest, craft that, and place that down in this house. Because we're going to be using this house anyway, so let's place it. There we go. Oh, it's on the wall, but never mind. And um, we'll just place everything we don't need. Now you'll notice that I've got some animal stuff and some raw meat. That was because whilst I was travelling, I bumped into a deer. If you bump into a deer, your best bet is to kill it. And then use your axe to hit it once and you'll get yourself a large bone. You can then change that large bone into a bone shiv. And then you can harvest the meat off the animal. A couple of guns there, we'll keep them just in case. We'll drop our gun in there. We've got a fire axe as well. Oh, I'll just drop the fire axe. So already we've got better gear, which is great. So we'll actually use that fire axe. Uh, we'll just pop the cooking grill in there for now. Uh, we'll keep all of that stone axe because it's still useful to have. But we've got ourselves a pistol now. Uh, we can continue looting. And clear everything else in the house and then tackle the zombies that are up here. Okay, right, let's tackle these two zombies here. There he is. That zombie number two hasn't arrived. Loose flooring, there they are. There we go, second zombie's dead. So when you're in these houses, any sort of house, be wary of the floorboards. Some of them do break away. Like so. Whew. Okay. That's another way in and out. There's no loot on there. And the final... Final place for loot is across this end. Excellent. So as you can hear, it's seven o'clock now, so what we want to do is we want to secure this house. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get myself some wood frames. Ten wood frames. Now we're going to need some wood, so I'll just go around the surrounding area, gathering some wood up, just so we can lock out the areas that are that we've used to break in or that the zombies have broken so there we go that should give us enough wood uh, now this is still a lot door because we didn't go in here but the zombies broke all the iron off it so we can just break that door when I've got stamina to do it come on 
Okay, right. So and we want to create a door. Secure wooden door. And place them on there. So that is a gap we want blocking. And this is why we kept our stone axe because you can't use a fire axe to upgrade. And just upgrade it to the first level. Just to block everything off so the zombies don't have an easy time of getting in. And then we'll get our door. Okay, excellent. So we've now got a door that we've got for ourselves. And we can come in and out as we please. We've got some forged iron there. Got plenty of grain alcohol. Now, as you notice, we're still thirsty. But we have no water. Oh, I forgot to check the sink. Apart from coffee beans, absolutely nothing. So, you'll survive the night as you are. Okay, so your first night, you're going to struggle with water. It's not too much of a problem. If you've got a bit of time left, go hunting for some water and get yourself a bit of supply going and then use, obviously, your campfire um, to boil it if you can. If you can't, then you'll have to drink it badly and then hopefully you won't get too much of a problem with it. But if you don't have a house that you can secure, here is an alternative that you can do. So you wanna, uh, where are we? You wanna build yourself a stone shovel, so what do we need? We need some plant fibers and some small stone. So once you have yourself a stone shovel, And this will work almost every time. There we go. You just dig yourself a hole. Yes, it is painstakingly slow, unfortunately. Uh, you haven't got decent tools. But you just want to dig yourself down. You want to go down four times. When it does it, oh. oh, stamina is a killer. Okay, so once you're down four, you can then place a box above it and you can upgrade that like so. And you know it's worked because, as you can see, the outside sound has dipped. So you are in cover. And stay the night. And then once the night is over with, you just break it back down. And free yourself. The good thing is, is, is you don't need to re-dig. You can just jump. Place wooden frames like so. And you know where your little hidey hole is. So that's it, really, for day one. Uh, as it comes to an end, you want to make sure everything's secured. And as I say, if you haven't got something secured, then dig yourself a hole and secure yourself that way. So you should have time to get in a home as such. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but it will keep us safe. Just upgrade that. There we go. So, we're going to leave it here for this episode. We've covered quite a lot for day one. And we will move into day two. And hopefully gather ourselves some water. That's going to be one of our things. And then we can really start progressing. And getting ready for that horde night. So another point to make before we do go is. Instead of taking your bedroll from your previous location. You're better making a new bedroll. Because if you happen to get yourself killed on the way to a location. Uh, that you know you're going to make as a permanent location. You, you're going to be randomly spawned somewhere. If you haven't got a bed rolled down. And you can find yourself sometimes a lot further away. And what I'm saying a lot further away. Between 3 and 5k further away if not more. So your best bet is leave the original down. Because you know where you're going to spawn. And you know how to get back. Then when you get to the next place. Drop another bed roll down. And that one supersedes the previous one. And you've got yourself a safe location. And you haven't had to travel millions of miles. Multiple times to try and get there. So that's it from us for this episode. Hopefully you've learned enough to keep yourself alive for the first day. Oh, look at that, handy. 
you've always got to make sure you double check everything because it's easy to miss things there we go well hopefully this will help you survive the first night and then we'll move ourselves on to day two where we can gather some more supplies and we can get ourselves some water before we end up killing ourselves uh, if you're struggling with health remember it's a new system now so you use bandages to increase the maximum health and then you can use food and other things that'll increase your your health itself it doesn't automatically generate now unless you get the skill which it's got it in it somewhere oh it's here isn't it healing factor which i do strongly recommend you get if you can sooner rather than later especially if you're taking damage i'm comfortable knowing that i can survive on that whereas if you're new to the game i'd strongly recommend you get the healing factor and the slow metabolism as some of your earlier starters well, thank you very much, everybody. Make sure you leave any comments in the comment section if you'd like to learn anything new that I haven't already covered in day one, any comments, questions, or anything like that. And if you're enjoying the series, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified when I put up a new guide uh, for this game or for other games that you might enjoy playing. Until next time, everybody, take care for now, and I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye-bye.